Hello, everybody. I'm Marco Strain, the CEO and co-founder of Genesis Mining, and we are here today uh, because there is a special moment in the mining industry right now. Um, everybody is talking about it. The excitement is very big, but also a lot of people are concerned. I'm talking about the halving. It's coming up in a few days, and uh, therefore we thought we'd give you a quick update from our side. I'm here with Philip Salter, who is our head of operations. Uh, Philip, hello. <laughs> hey, hey, glad to be here. So, yes, yeah, so let's maybe um, update our users about the current situation. I think um, maybe you uh, explain a little bit about the technical and uh, about the details on what is actually happening on the halving. Yeah, yeah. There's been so many questions about the halving recently and everyone's coming from a different angle and asking questions. I think the most important thing is the, the, the technical background of what this even is, right? And um, so let me give a quick roundup of it. When Bitcoin was created in 2009 by Satoshi Nakamoto, he created basically a new monetary system. He said, hey guys, I've created this new thing. He released his white paper, he released the, released the software. This is Bitcoin. <laughs> now imagine if he said, this is Bitcoin, there's going to be 21 million Bitcoin in total, and I own all the Bitcoins and you have to buy them from me or you have to get them from me somehow. That would not be the best selling argument for a new kind of financial system, right? Um, so instead what he opted to do is he started the Bitcoin system with zero Bitcoin in circulation. There wasn't a single Bitcoin. And only people who were miners to the network, basically securing the network and supporting everything, they would be rewarded with Bitcoins for their mining work. Basically saying everyone that contributes to the network and contributes to Bitcoin, gets fresh coins paid out. But this um, payout scheme, which is mining, uh, one, one of the core parts of mining, let's say, um, will only continue until there's 21 million Bitcoins. After that, there'll be no more coins minted. And then um, the, also the decision was made to not have this kind of constant um, uh, generation rate of Bitcoin until there's 21 million coins reached. Mm -hmm. The idea was to have more generation at the beginning and then less and less and less over time to kind of wean the, the Bitcoin network from fresh coins being generated until in the end there's almost nothing being generated and then nothing being generated. So this kind of um, constant reduction of fresh coin generation over time is done by the halving me mechanism, where every four years, the number of Bitcoins generated every block, which means like every day also, is halved. Yeah. It's halved. started with 50 Bitcoins per, uh, per, per, per block, then 25, now we're at 12.5. And after the halving, it'll be 6.25 Bitcoin generated per block. Very good. And actually, this is a very uh, core and essential dynamics uh, of Bitcoin, because in the end, it really, we, one of the core features of Bitcoin is that it is limited and scarce, and that increases the scarcity and, uh, and basically brings it to a level where in the end, all coins are minted and, uh, are, and no new coins are coming up and uh, we have a limited uh, supply. So um, I think that um, this is a, um, we actually we should devote the time to basically talk a little bit about what actually uh, has the price, what effect does the price have on miners. Uh, and I mean obviously all of you are, uh, you care a lot whether your bitcoins are now worth 10,000 or I don't know, 30,000 or potentially more uh, and, um, or, or less, uh, that also affects you. So I think we need to, maybe for all of our users, for everyone to understand what, that, uh, what, what does the price actually play a role in that halving event. Um, we, uh, yeah, it would be good to go over the specific scenarios. Yeah, 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 yeah. The number of Bitcoin halving, like the, the number of Bitcoin being generated going down by half, it's a huge economic impact, right? So, the, so of course, the price of, the, of the, each coin is worth counteracts that a little bit. So let's say that after the halving, and there'll only be half as many Bitcoins to be mined, let's say the price doubles, right? That would still mean that the revenue of a miner, the total income measured, measured in dollars, let's say, that would stay constant. How probable is that? I'm not sure. But um, there's also the other scenario. The price doesn't have to go up. The price could also go down after halving. Um, yeah. uh, I think that that's a way more unprobable scenario, but there are arguments for it. I'll just go into it just to, to make the point complete. 
the idea is that when miners are mining coins, they always have to have they have to pay for their electricity costs, which is usually a monthly expense, right? And um, when they're profitable, it means that they're generating you know a lot of Bitcoin, and a part of those Bitcoin they're selling for paying the electricity, and the other part they keep in their pocket for profit. That's the assumption. Yeah. But if the um, the price of the coins goes down and their revenue goes down, then they actually have to sell more of their total generated coins to pay the electricity because they have a smaller margin. So the, the, the theory is that this could lead to people selling more coins and that actually price, driving the price down. But I'm, I'm not too sure about this. Uh, <laughs> of course, if the, the, the thing is that the electricity costs are constant in US dollar, right? They pay the same electricity costs. So maybe yeah. they have to pay sell more coins to get the same amount of cost back but actually the, it's the same selling pressure measured in dollars anyway going into too much detail generally the, the price could go up it could stay the same or it could go down after the halving in the end we don't know like, no, no one no one will be able to tell you that but the community sentiment is definitely that the price should be going up um or at least staying similar or going up because of just the, of the supply being reduced. There's less new coins coming into the system. Demand for the coins is constant, caused by which should it change. And um, that should lead to a, to, a, to a price increase. Probably it won't happen on the same day of the halving that the price starts shooting up. Let's be reasonable. But um, the, the community sentiment generally uh, is that the price, uh, that's a bullish factor for, for the Bitcoin, uh, sorry, for the mining profitability. Yes, I think that gives a good outline of uh, uh, various scenarios. In the end, I think it's very important to mention that obviously um, predicting the Bitcoin price is something like throwing a dice on a short term. It's really, there's a lot of uh, different unpredictable scenarios. And as you know, Bitcoin price and Bitcoin hash rate are two measures that are really uh, very difficult in any way to predict. Um, it's like predicting a stock price uh, in a way. Yeah? It's also extremely difficult. And um, so giving short-term protection, projections are always coming with a certain, um, you have to be really, uh, uh, those are opinions and you have to be careful uh, and make your own opinion uh, ideally. Um, but I think it helps a lot to explain the dynamics and what can, what can happen in various scenarios. What we believe, I think, and that's probably why a lot of you uh, are here and actually found the way to Bitcoin is because we are in it for the long term. We have been started because we thought Bitcoin is going to grow, Bitcoin is, is going to unfold its potential over, over the years. And that is absolutely unchanged. We believe in the long-term future of Bitcoin. We think that this is really a, uh, a, a strong asset and uh, it is something that is really needed in the world. And this is our core motivation. So let's be clear about the halving, understand whatever, what, what all the scenarios mean. But in the end, I think from our side at least, we are very bullish, uh, really looking five years uh, and longer ahead. Um, having said that, I think we are now in a very particular uh, time. Um, we are all like the lockdown is there. Uh, we have Corona that basically came suddenly up. Um, maybe a few words uh, on that, uh, Philip. Um, a lot of questions came from users. Uh, how do you see it? Yeah, um, Corona is of course the, the, the number one talking topic. Uh, maybe even being talked about more than the halving of the Bitcoin world. Um, corona is, of course, having an impact uh, on the whole world economy. So it's a big thing. And it's also not leaving mining unaffected. Luckily, mining is a, not a very uh, personnel intensive business. Um, there's no like, uh, there's no walk in shops in mining and, and stuff like this. So, so there's no like lockdowns that like shut down farms or stuff like this. Um, but so the running operations uh, are not so much affected, but of course the supply chains globally are impacted. So many products nowadays are being produced in China and uh, China was in a, in a lockdown for a long time and just caused delays everywhere. And um, well, mining is not affected by that, obviously. But I think generally we can say that uh, in, in, in the kind of uh, mining space and IT generally, the, the slowdown is not as uh, not as drastic as we have in like service providing industries like hotels and restaurants or something. Yeah. So we're kind of, we're kind of lucky there. Um, let's see how long it takes to to blow over. Maybe another couple of months. Or your guess is as good as mine. 
um, about Corona, but um, uh, I don't think that this will have any kind of long-term impacts for, for, for Bitcoin mining or for Genesis mining generally. Yes. Right. No, def definitely not. I think that actually it bears an opportunity um, for Bitcoin, certainly. I mean, Bitcoin was made for a crisis. Uh, it's not that we favor it, obviously. It's a, an unfortunate situation, but it stresses the, the importance of, um, of, of, of Bitcoin and uh, it, it really highlights it in a certain way. And we have seen also it was, Bitcoin was performing quite strong in the recent uh, weeks. So um, I think that's uh, an important factor and I want to emphasize again that really um, the, the next years to come are very important and also on our side we are doing, we are working very hard day and night in order to expand our facilities um, on every continent where we operate and we uh, have an, a very ambitious but very realistic goal and we want to be the first Miner uh, that will operate more than one gigawatt on a global scale and we are on a good way to that uh, On our expansion sites as you know in Iceland Sweden Nordics in general and also of course America and North America in total um, So that's very exciting and everything is uh, obviously happening also outside of China. I uh, spoke recently about uh, the importance again of decentralizing mining very very important um, that is really not Satoshi's will in any way that we have clustering and we have like uh, too much hash rate in one area in that regard I think uh, I hope this helped you and it was a great up update we certainly enjoyed it um, yeah thanks thanks for everybody thank you for joining in thank you everyone take care